In this lesson, we are going to discuss transition matrices. Consider the following basis for R2. And suppose that V is the column matrix 3, 2. Let us find the coordinate vector of V with respect to the basis S and the coordinate vector of V with respect to the basis R. Let us first start with the coordinate vector of V with respect to the basis R. Note that R is the standard basis for R2. So therefore, VR is just the column vector 3, 2 itself, right? Because 3, 2 is equal to 3 times 1, 0 plus 2 times 0, 1. However, when we want to compute the coordinate vector of V with respect to S, we have to know first how to write 3, 2 as a linear combination of the elements in S. So we're looking for A1 and A2 here, such that A1 times 1, 1 plus A2 times 2, 1 is equal to 3, 2. Now to solve this, we have to form the augmented matrix. And when we transform it into its row echelon form, we get And from here, we get that A1 equals 1 and A2 is also equal to 1. So we can now replace this by 1 and 1. So therefore, the coordinate vector of V with respect to S is 1, 1. From this example, we've noticed that the coordinate vector it's easy to compute when we are dealing with standard ordered basis. However, when it's no longer the standard ordered basis, we still have to do some computations. How are these two coordinate vectors related? That is the change of basis problem that we want to consider. If we change the basis of a vector space from one basis to another, how will the coordinate vectors be related? Let us recall the following theorem. If we have a linear transformation from V to W and we have basis for our domain and codomain, the coordinate vector of an element in V, when you multiply it with the matrix representation, you will get the coordinate vector of the image with respect to the basis of the codomain. Let us take our linear transformation to be equal to the identity linear transformation. It takes every vector in V to itself. Let us also get two bases for V. Let's call them R and S. These are ordered bases for V. This equation now becomes the matrix representation of the identity matrix from S to R, you multiply that with coordinate vector of V with respect to S. So here I am looking at S as the ordered basis for V and then R is the ordered basis for V here. This is equal to the image of V under I. And then that's the coordinate vector with respect to what basis? This one. R. But what is I of V? I of V is simply equal to V. So this equation now gives us the relationship between two coordinate vectors with respect to two different bases. This matrix, the matrix representation from S to R is called the transition matrix or change of basis matrix from S to R. So meaning to say, when we multiply this transition matrix to a coordinate vector with respect to a certain basis, we will get the coordinate vector of this same vector with respect to a different basis. How does the matrix representation of I from S to R again look like? Recall that it will be the image of 
the elements in S, so that's I of V1, I of V2, up to I of Vn, but we will get the coordinate vector with respect to the basis R. But I of V1 up to I of Vn is just equal to V1 up to Vn. This is the transition matrix from S to R. So hence, to get the transition matrix from S to R, you get the coordinate vectors of the old basis. This one will be your old. You're, coming, you're starting from S. You want to go to the new basis R. You have to get the coordinate vector of the old basis with respect to the new basis. There. The columns of the transition matrix from an old basis to a new basis are the coordinate vectors of the old basis relative to the new basis. Here are some properties of transition matrices. This is very important. What is this saying? The product of the transition matrix from R to S and the transition matrix from S to R is equal to the identity matrix, meaning to say... These two are inverses of each other. So, hence, this is saying that any transition matrix is invertible and the transition matrix from R to S is the inverse of the transition matrix from S to R. This is very useful, especially when we are considering two bases wherein it's easier to get the transition matrix from R to S or S to R. Let me illustrate that by this example. Suppose that S is this basis 1, 1, 2, 1 and R is the standard ordered basis. Let us get the transition matrix from S to R. What is the transition matrix from S to R? The columns will be the coordinate vectors of U1 relative to R, U2 relative to R. But since R is our standard basis, the coordinate vector of 1, 1 with respect to this basis is just itself. So this is just 1, 1, 2, 1. How do we get the transition matrix from R to S? By definition, you have to get the coordinate vector of the elements in R. So that's V1. Get the coordinate vector of that relative to S. And then V2 relative to S. Which means that we have to write these vectors as a linear combination of this. However, from our theorem, this matrix is equal to the transition matrix from s to r and get its inverse all we have to do is to get the inverse of that so we have inverse of 1 1 to 1 what is the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix it's 1 over a b minus b c so that's negative 1 and then interchange a and b but they are just the same and get the negatives of this entry so we have negative 2 negative 1 so therefore this is equal to negative 1 2 1 negative 1 so let us verify this column is the coordinate vector of v1 with respect to s let us check is 1 0 equal to negative 1 times u1 plus 1 times u2. We have negative 1 plus 2 is 1, correct? This is negative 1 plus 1, which is 0, correct? Next, coordinate vector of v2 with respect to s. v2 is 0, 1. Let us check if it's really equal to 2 times 1, 1 plus negative 1 times 
2, 1. So we have 2 minus 2 is 0. 2 minus 1 is 1. Correct. So this example is telling us that if we want to get the transition matrix from one basis to another, and it's easier to compute the other way around, all we have to do is to get the transition matrix the other direction, but don't forget to get its inverse. Here's another example. Let us find the transition matrix from S to R. Now, take note that if we want to get the transition matrix from S to R, we have to write this as linear combinations of this. Since it's not that easy to get this transition matrix, what I will do is I will find the transition matrix from R to S and then get its inverse. That will give us a transition matrix from S to R. This matrix is the matrix whose columns are the coordinate vectors of the elements of R. So that's V1 S, V2 S, V3 S. V1, which is equal to 1, is just equal to 1 times 1 plus 0 times x plus 0 times x squared. V2, which is 1 minus x, is equal to 1 times 1 minus 1 times x plus 0 x squared. And lastly, V3, which is 1 minus x squared, is equal to 1 minus 2x plus x squared. So hence, the coordinate vector of V1 with respect to x is 1, 0, 0. Coordinate vector of V2 with respect to x is 1, negative 1, 0. Coordinate vector of V3 is 1, negative 2, 1. Again, we are recording the coefficients of 1, x, and x squared. Now verify that when you get the inverse of this matrix, it's also equal to itself. This is equal to the transition matrix from S to R. So by definition, this is the coordinate vector of the elements of S. So that's 1 relative to R. This is x relative to r and x squared relative to r. Let us verify your 1 here is equal to 1 times v1 plus 0 times v2 plus 0 times v3. Which is correct. Next, your x here is equal to 1 times v1 minus v2 plus 0 v3 v1 is 1 minus v2 so we have minus 1 plus x correct and lastly x squared the coordinate vector is 1 negative to 1 so x squared is equal to 1 times v1 minus 2 v2 plus v3. So that's 1 times 1 minus 2 plus 2x plus the square of this, which is 1 minus 2x plus x squared. We have 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 2 is 0. 2x minus 2, it's really equal to x squared. We will be making use of transition matrices in our next lesson wherein we will now be getting the matrix representation of linear transformations with respect to bases that are not necessarily the standard ordered bases.